You are welcome to another lesson on that bearing and distance. And I hope you enjoyed what we considered during the, during the last lesson, where we looked at trigonometric ratios and Pythagoras theorem. And I hope you've been able to lay your hands on some questions to solve them. So with that, we move to our lesson for today. We are moving further and we are moving to quadrants. When we talk about quadrants, from our last lesson, we were looking at angles between 0 degree and 90 degree. But when we have angles that are greater than 90 degree, then what are we going to do? Then that is where quadrant now step in. Before we move to quadrant, to quadrant, there are some basic things that we need to consider. And they are this. When we multiply minus by minus, that will give us plus. Also, the same thing for division. If you divide minus by minus, it will also give us plus. When we multiply minus by plus, it will give us minus. Then, the same way, if you divide minus by addition sign, it will give us minus as well. Also, if you multiply plus and minus, it will give us minus. And if you divide plus by minus, it will also give us minus. And the last one, if you multiply plus by plus, we have plus. And if you divide plus by plus, it will also give us plus. Because in this quadrant, we shall we I'll be making reference to this. So when we talk about quadrants, we talk about a circle. When we have a circle, angle in the circle is 360 degrees. When you make a circle, you have 360 degrees. And this circle we divide it into two into four equal parts we have this and we have this so each segment in this circle is 90 degree as you from right angle this is 90 this is another 90 this is 90 and this is the last 90 so the sum of everything is giving us 360 degrees so this part we call it the first quadrant this second one, we call it second quadrant. Our movement is anticlockwise. And when we talk about anticlockwise, we are talking about the other way around. We know the movement of the clock from 12 to 12. But we are moving the other way around. That is why we call it anticlockwise movement. This one, we call it third quadrant. Then this one, we call it fourth quadrant. And from here, we need to know that here we have a vertical line and we have another horizontal line. If you want to plot a graph from here, this vertical line has been divided into two parts by this line. So this part, we call it the positive y. We call it y-axis. And this other part, we call it the negative y. The horizontal line as well, we call this one the positive x, and the other one, we call it the negative x, where this one is our origin. So, what we want to derive here is to derive, to know the sign. Because at times when we are using calculator, because most students now, they are used to calculator. But everything is not all about calculator. We can ask some questions at times, and they will tell us, or they will even ask us not to use calculator, because that is common now. So, if you are not to use calculator, then most, most students, they, they, they are, there will be a problem at that point. Because they won't know what to do. So, what we are trying to do here is how to make some calculations under this under quadrant without using calculator with the help of a mathematical table or what we call a four-figure table. So, here, we move to first quadrant. We have this. As I've said earlier, that this is plus y, and this is plus x, where this is our origin. So if you bring out another axis from A, we can label that one with anything, but for this lesson, I will label that one with plus z throughout. So A, I have this one as plus z. If I should complete this, you know, I explained that this axis above the origin is called the positive y. And this other axis, this horizontal line 
to the right of the origin is called the positive x. And I said something last week that we can use anything to denote this angle. I said we can use theta, we can use beta, we can use alpha, and so on. But today, again, I'm still going to make use of theta. And from what I explained last week, and from what I explained during the last lesson, I said the side that is facing our angle, I said that is the opposite. This is a right angle. And I said the side facing the right angle is what we call the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is also the longest side. And the last side is called the adjacent side. So from A, if you look at sine theta, from so, sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So this is opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite side from here is plus y, and the hypotenuse is plus z. So if you look at what we have here, we have plus divided by plus. And from what I explained earlier, I said plus divided by plus will give us plus. So that means this one will give us plus sine theta. We also have cos theta. Cos theta is k from k. So cos theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So that is adjacent over hypotenuse. And our adjacent side is plus x. Our hypotenuse is plus z. So this one, plus divided by plus, is also plus. So this one will give us plus cos theta. Now we have another one, tan theta. Tan from toa. I explained during the last lesson that we have soca toa. So this toa, t is telling us about tan, oa is telling us about opposite, and aa is adjacent. So the opposite side is plus y, while the adjacent is plus x. If you look at the side, we have plus divided by plus. That will also give us plus tan theta. And if you look at these ones, we notice that they are all having positive sign. So I'm going to decode everything. At the end of, after deriving everything, I will decode that with something that we can easily remember at any time. So this one, we call it all. We are calling it all because they are all positive. Now, from here, we move to second quadrant. And again from A, from the first quadrant, we have angles between 0 degree, less than theta, less than 90 degree. And the meaning of this is angles from first quadrant, they are from 0 degree to 90 degree. So at times, if you come across the question where we need to find maybe sign 30, 30 is between this. Is still in this range, so from that one we can just go to our four figure table. Four figure table is only from we can check angles from zero degree to 89 degree from four figure table. So for other quadrant two, where we have angles that are more than 90 degree, what we need to do there is to be able to convert those angles that we have to something that we can check from the four figure table. And we have second quadrant. These all angles here are from 90 degree, less than theta, less than 180 degree. The middle of this is angles here, they are from 90 degree to 180 degree. And if you make reference to what we have here, this is where the second quadrant is. This one still remains our plus y. This one still remains our minus y. This is plus x. And this one is minus x. So second quadrant, that is the second place that we have there. So if you bring out a quadrant, I said earlier that throughout this derivation, I'll be using plus z to represent this axis that I'm bringing out from the x and y axis. So from here, I have this as plus z. And there's something here. We have this angle from here, from this First, from, from this horizontal axis on the first quadrant, I will call this theta. Theta now, from here, I label this one as theta. But here, we are no more using the first quadrant. Theta from here is more than 90 degrees. So that's the essence of the quadrant that we are looking at. Theta here is, from, is, theta here is more than 90 degrees, but it's not up to 180 degrees. And 180 degrees, when we have the straight line, 
A straight line like this is dividing this circle into two equal parts. And I explained earlier that angle in the circle is 360. When we have a line that is now dividing 360 into two, so that means we have 360 over 2, which is 180 degrees. And that is why we have angle on the straight line to be 180 degrees. So the angle that will be left here will now be theta, will now be 180 degrees minus theta. Because this is a straight line. By the time we get to this line again, we started from here. By the time we get to this place, we have 180 degree. But from air to air is theta. So the angle left air will be 180 minus theta. For example, if you are asked to find maybe sign 150 from air, and there's no way we can check 150 from the four figure table, then we need to express this angle that we have left. We need to express it as an acute angle. An acute angle is an angle less than 90 degree. So from there, we just subtract that 150 from 180. So that will give us sine 30. So from air, this one is still plus y. But if you look at this horizontal line, this one is minus x. Because I said this side is the negative axis of x. So this is 180 minus theta. And the side facing it is opposite. This is our right angle. The side facing the right angle is our hypotenuse. And the last side is called adjacent. So from there we have sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And our opposite side is plus y. Our hypotenuse is plus z. And plus divided by plus from here, that is plus sine 180 degree minus theta. So in place of theta, we are replacing that theta with 180 degree minus theta, which we can apply to that last example I explained, that if you have sine 150, I want to check from the four figure table. There's no way we can see 150 degree from the four figure table. 150 degree is from second quadrant because it is still within this range. 90 degree, less than theta, less than 180 degree. So to check it from the fourth figure table, we just remove that 150 from 180, then we have 30. So the second one, we have cos theta, that is from k, that is adjacent divided by hypotenuse. Adjacent side is minus x, then the hypotenuse is plus z. So from here, I said minus divided by plus, we give us minus. So this one will give us minus cos 180 degree minus theta. Then we have tan theta. Tan theta from Tua, that is opposite over adjacent. And the opposite side from here is plus y, while the adjacent side is minus x. And from here, plus divided by minus will give us minus. So this one will give us minus tan 180 degree minus theta. At times, for this second quadrant and other quadrant that we have, when we press our calculator for tan 150, we just notice that our calculator will give us minus something. But where is that minus from? It has been programmed on the calculator. This quadrant, they are on the calculator. That is why your, the, the calculator will give us the answer straight without even going through the fourth table or without even going through this thing. It is as a result of the program. Of the pro of um, the work of the programmers, what they have done in the calculator. But if you don't want to use calculator, this is the way to go about this. If you want to check tan 150, tan 150, 150 is from second quadrant. Then automatically, because of this minus that we have, it will carry negative sign. They will now do 180 minus 30, 180 minus 150. So we have minus tan 30 degree. Then we can check our fourth quadrant for that. So this one. If you look at everything, only sign is positive. So I will represent this one with student. I will represent this one with student. So after this, we move to our third quadrant. Now we move to third quadrant. For third quadrant, we have from 180 degree. 
less than theta to 270 degree. By the time we add 90 to 180, we have 270 degree. So this one still remains our positive y, then the other one, our negative y. To the right, we have positive x, then to the left of the horizontal line, we have negative x. So this is first, second term. So we bring out this one. This is origin. They will bring out this from A. And theta now has been extended from 0 degree to the third quadrant. So we have this as theta. This is theta. And the angle from A, let me just label it here. This one, we are, still talk, we are talking about this vertical line, the one below the origin, that is minus y. Then the horizontal line, the one to the left hand side of the origin, that is minus x. But from a to a is theta. So the angle a is just theta minus 180. It is theta minus 180 because by the time we move from a to a, that is 180. But there is an extension to theta. So the extension is what we generate by deducting the value of theta that we are given in the question from while deducting 180 from it. Example of this is if you are asked to find sine 230. Sine 230 cannot be checked from the fourth figure table. It cannot be checked from the fourth figure table, but we can express it in a simpler form that will make it to be checkable from the fourth figure table. So from here, we just remove 180 from 230. So that will give us sine 50 degree. We have not included the sign yet because we don't know the sign the, the sign that will be in front of this. But we are going to derive that now. So from here, the side facing our angle still remains our opposite. The side facing our gradient this one as plus z. The side facing our right angle still remains our hypotenuse. And this last side still remains our adjacent. Sine theta from there, that is opposite divided by hypotenuse. Our opposite side is minus y. Then our hypotenuse is plus z. And to those signs that I explained when we started, I said minus divided by plus will give us minus. That is minus sine theta minus 180 degree. Now to cos. Cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. And our adjacent side is minus x, while our hypotenuse side is plus z. Minus divided by plus will also give us minus. That is minus cos theta minus 180 degree. Then we have tan. Tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. That is, opposite is minus y, while adjacent is minus x. So minus divided by plus. The same way we have minus times multiplied by minus to be plus, minus divided by minus is also plus. That is plus tan theta minus 180. So if you look at this top quadrant, only tan is positive. So I will represent this one with take. For the first quadrant, I represented the first quadrant with all. The second quadrant, since it was only sign that is having negative sign, I represented that one with students. For this one, since we only have tan carrying positive sign, I'm representing that one with take. Then that will take us to the last quadrant, fourth quadrant. And for the fourth quadrant, we have from 270 degree less than theta, then up to 360 degree. And we have this plus y minus y plus x minus x. So this is fourth quadrant. I'll bring out this. I'll call it plus z. So from here, we still go back to where we started from. We started from here. So this is coming like this to this line. So this is our theta. This is not a full circle, but almost. So the angle that we are having left here is the angle of a full circle, which is 360 degree minus theta. Theta is the, the angle that we have from this x-axis to this plus z-axis. So this one, since it is also the same as this, so this one is minus y, 
and this one is plus x. So the side facing our angle still remains our opposite. The side facing our right angle still remains our hypotenuse. And the last side is adjacent. So from there I have sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse from so. So the opposite here is minus y. Hypotenuse is plus z. Minus divided by plus will give us minus sine 360 degree minus theta. Cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse from k. So adjacent is plus x and hypotenuse is plus z. Plus divided by plus, that will give us plus cos 360 degree minus theta. And we have tan. Tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. Our opposite side from there is minus y. Why our adjacent is plus z plus x. So this would be minus minus divided by plus give us minus tan 360 degree minus theta. So I will represent this one with coke. So we can quickly remember this. If we find ourselves in an example, we can just quickly remember the name. All students take coke. For the first one, all, all of them, they are all positive. For the second one, student, that, that is telling us that only sign is positive. For the third quadrant, only tan is positive. So we are representing that one with take. Then for the fourth quadrant, only cos is positive. So we are representing that one with coke. So that is what we have for the quadrant. And now we proceed by looking at examples. If you come across some angle and they ask us to use our four figure table to check them, then what are we to do without using calculator. So that's the next thing we look at now. I got a question just now from a student asking for the relevance of all students take coke to solving triangles. I represented each quadrant with those things and the essence of all students take coke is for you to be able to know if you are given an angle to know the quadrant that that angle is coming from and to know the sign that that particular angle will carry by the time you are able to express it as an acute angle. So we are asked to solve this triangle that we have here and we are giving this angle as 160 degrees. Now when we have sine or cosine or tangent of this angle, we need to ask ourselves without a scientific calculator that will take care of the, trigger, of the value of this. How am I going to find this? 160 is less than 180, but it's more than 90 degrees. Then obviously that one is coming from second quadrant. And if it is sign that I want to check, you know that since that sign is telling us about, this, since we are talking about second quadrant, and from second quadrant I denoted that one with student. So that student is representing sign. So which means for the second quadrant, sign is positive. Cosine is negative, the tangent is also negative. And the examples we are about to solve now, I believe they will take care of that one because the examples we are about to solve, they will go through all the quadrants that I've explained earlier. So we have example. To do this, you need to get a four figure table. It's very important. The one from Wyek or the one from Neko. So the example here says, use four-figure table to check the first one we have sine 310 degree. Second one, we have Tan 236. Also, we have cos 308 degree. Then, the last one we have sine minus 129 degree. Now, to solve this, the first one we have sine 310 degree. Now, 310 is from 
fourth quadrant. And it's from fourth quadrant because angles in the fourth quadrant are more than 270 degrees, but they are less than 360 degrees. So 310 is more than 270, but it is less than 360 degrees. Now, after that, the next thing is which sign? What will be the sign? Is it positive or negative? Then we go back to what we derived the other time. All students take coke. That coke is representing fourth quadrant. So from fourth quadrant, only cos is positive from that coke. So this one now will be minus sign 360 minus 310. And that is from fourth quadrant. So 360 minus 310, that is minus sign 50 degree. So 50 degree that we have, that one can be checked from the fourth figure table. We open our fourth figure table to sign, sign of angles. From sign of angles, we check the vertical side for 50 degree. And it will be checked, the value will be obtained for 50 degree under zero. But if you have something like 50.34 degree, or let's say 50.3 degree, so that will be 50, we we'll go to 50, but instead of checking it under zero, as we are doing here, we check this one for 50 under three. As we have 50.3. If you have 50.87, we check it for 50 under eight, then there's a column there representing difference. We don't need to approximate everything to the nearest whole number. We deal with it based on what we have in the question. But we can only approximate if the angle we want to check is like maybe 50.31758. You can see that this one is more than four digits. We convert it to four digit number and that will be 50.32. But if you have this 50.32, we, we don't need to approximate it because that will affect our answer. If our level of approximation is too much. So from here we check sign 50 under 0. And that will give us minus 0 0.7660. So if we press our calculator, our scientific calculator will input sign 310. This is the answer the calculator will bring out. But this is a way of getting that answer without a scientific calculator. The second example is asking us for tan 236. 236 is from third quadrant. And it's from third quadrant because this angle is more than 180, but it's less than 270 degrees. So and we need to go back to that thing again. All students take coke. Take, that is from third quadrant. And the T there is telling us that tan is positive. And here we are talking about tan, so this one will be plus tan 236 degree minus 180 degree this one is from third quadrant so that is giving us plus tan 56 degree so we are having O number and what we check here we are not to check sign again because this is tan so we go to tangent of angle is also in the fourth figure table. When we get to tangent of angle, we check 56 under 0. And that will give us plus 1.4826. That is what we have. And the same value our scientific calculator will give us if you input tan 236 on the calculator. I got a question that why can't we remove this 236 from 270 the same way we remove this 310 from 360 degree here. Now, if we go back to our third quadrant, as we are aware that this 236 is from third quadrant. From third quadrant, what I explained the other time, I said, this one, if you bring out this, this is the angle air from air to this line is theta. But the angle we need from A is this angle, A. So we are not doing that because this angle that we need A is from A to A, we have 180 degree, that is angle on the straight line. 
and the angle that will be left a is just removing 180 degree which is the angle from this place to this place from the value of theta that we have if you remove 236 from 270 degree that will give us 34 degree but what we have here is 56 degrees so we get another answer which will be different from the right answer for this so any angle you come across that is coming from third quadrant please don't make the mistake of removing that angle from 270 but the right thing to do is to remove 180 degree from the given angle which is from third quadrant so the third one we have cos 308 degree 308 is more than 270 but it is not up to 360 degree so this one is coming from fourth quadrant and for fourth quadrant this is cos if you go back to that thing that clue that i gave you the other time that all students take coke coke is coming from that is representing fourth quadrant and fourth quadrant the coke the c there is telling us about cos and that means we have only cosine to be positive so this one will be plus cos 360 degree minus 308 degree so this is from fourth quadrant so this one will give us plus cos 52 degree then for that we have plus 0.6157 so if you check under cosine of angles if you check 52 under 0 this is the answer that we see in the fourth grade table and even if you use a scientific calculator for this if you input cos 308 in your scientific calculator the calculator will bring out this answer now the last one there the fourth example we have sine minus 129 degree. Now, there's no how we check a negative angle from the four figure table. The first thing to do here is to get an equivalent and positive angle. To get an angle that is positive, which is equivalent to this one. If you press our scientific calculator, if you input sine minus 129, our calculator will give us the right answer. But Without the calculator, we first get the equivalent positive angle, and we do that by adding 360 to this. And we are adding 360 to this because that is the angle in a circle. That is the possibility that we can have in a quadrant. If you take it once. So that's why we are adding 360. So we have this one as sine minus 129 degree plus 360 degree. We are trying to get positive angle. So, so to generate that positive angle from this negative, from this minus 129 that we have, we add 360 to that minus 129, and that will give us sine 231 degree. Now the next thing is, which quadrant is 231 from? This 231 is more than 180, but it is less than 270 degree so this is from third quadrant and in the third quadrant from our uh, all student take coke take that is coming from third quadrant and that is telling us that only time is positive so cosine and sine they are negative so this will be minus sine 231 degree minus 180 degree we cannot have this as minus sine 270 minus 231 i explained that with the second example the other time that will give us an answer that is different from the right answer that we are meant to have there so this is minus sine that is 51 degree so if you go to our four figure table from here if we check under sign, the value of 51 under 0. That will give us minus 0 0.7771 from our four-figure table.
That's all we have. And I hope with these four examples, we can lay our hands on some other questions on this. We can even bring out some questions on our own to task ourselves. Now we have another example here. Yeah. But this example is asking us to find the value of theta. The, the first examples that we considered, we looked at how to check the fourth figure table for the value of some angles. Now here, eh, we already have the values of these angles, but the question is asking us to find the angles. And there is a condition here eh, that our angle must be between 0 degree and 360 degree. So which means our angle must cover through all the quadrants. But we must also take into consideration the sign in front of these values that we have. Like the first one, we have sine theta is equal to 0 0.8660. There's something we call arc sine. Arc sine is just the inverse of sine. And that can be checked using calculator, and it can also be checked using our four figure table. And to check this from our four figure table, we will not check for the first column. What we do is we open our four figure table to sine theta, to where we have sine of angles, and we search for the closest value to 0 0.8660. We search for it. So from here, we have theta to be arc sine of 0 0.8660 when we see raised to power minus 1 the meaning is the inverse of sine we check the sine of a particular angle and that's why we have 0 0.8660 now which angle is giving us that 0 0.8660 that is what this question is asking us and from here theta is equal to 60 degree from the quadrant that I explained earlier, I said sine is positive in the first quadrant and is also positive in the second quadrant. This is positive. So we look at the value of that particular angle in the first quadrant and we also check for that angle in the other quadrant where sine is positive and that is second quadrant or 180 degree minus 60 degree. So therefore, Theta is equal to 60 degree or 120 degree. So if you check, if you are giving theta as 60 and we are to check from first figure table, we have 0 0.860. If you are giving theta as 120 degree, from what I explained about second quadrant, the angle we have, we remove it from 180. 180 degree minus 120. So if we remove 180 from one, 120 from 180, we still end up having 60, which means the value of these two are the same thing. So for every three functions, they are positive in two quadrants, they are negative in two quadrants. Like sine is positive in first quadrant, is positive in second quadrant. But it is negative in third and fourth. Cosine is positive in first quadrant and fourth. But it is negative in second and third. Tan is positive in first quadrant and third quadrant. But it is, pos it is negative in second quadrant and the fourth quadrant. So the second one we have cos theta is minus 0 0.7071. Now with this minus that we have here, it is obvious that this cos, this one is not from first quadrant at all. Because in the first quadrant, all, all of them are positive. So for this negative one, we have this theta to either be from, from second quadrant or from third quadrant quadrant. But what we need to do here is, we first need to ignore this negative sign. And we get the equivalent of 0 0.7071 from the first quadrant. So from here we have theta to be a cos of 0 0.7071. So that one will give us 45 degree. But because of this sign, this negative sign here, theta is from Is from second or third quadrant. So therefore, from there, our theta will be 180 degree minus 45 degree, or 180 degree plus 45 degree. So if your theta is 135 degree, or 
225 degree. I added 45 to 180 here because from third quadrant, the angle we are given, if you remove 180 from that angle, then we get the value of theta that we can check from the fourth figure table. So by the time we remove 45 from this 225, by the time we remove 180 from this 225, we have 45. By the time we remove this 135 from 180, we have 45. So that solves the two questions that we have there. Now, I got a question that how come from here we have 60 degree to be the same thing as 120 degree, but here we are having 135 and we are having 225. Now, we have two answers A because of the instruction we have in this question that our theta is lying between 0 degree and 360 degree. But assuming there is nothing like this and they are just asking us to find the value of theta without this condition, with our first answer, we are done. The same thing also for this one. If there is no thing like this here, with this 135, just removing 45 from 180, we have a full mark for that question, assuming there is no instruction like this.